Hi there and welcome back to the Hedgerow Kitchen. Now today I'm going to be talking you through my recipe for the most gorgeous and juicy venison stew out there in my opinion. Now this is just a fantastic recipe for the cold winter months. To be perfectly honest you could do it all year uh, but I like to do it probably two or three times a week during the cold winter months and it's an absolute winner in my family. Really really easy to make. Um, a lot of these ingredients you'll generally have at home anyway um, and it's very uncomplicated. A lot of people don't tend to like to do stews because they think it takes ages. And the reality is, end to end, this will probably take you an hour and a half to two hours, but it's a superb recipe, and I really hope you try it at home. Now, in terms of the, um, the ingredients for this recipe, let me talk you through them. So in terms of your veg, first things first, you've got basically one and a half large carrots here. All you need to do is just chop them up um, don't be too fussy about it, you don't need to be too small, just chop them up. Exactly the same with the celery, you've got two sticks of celery here, just, just roughly chop them. You've got one large red onion here, again, roughly chop it, you don't need to be too fancy. And we've got 100 grams of swede here, again, roughly chop it. Now if you don't have swede, that's absolutely fine, You're, uh, it's, it's very easy to replace that with just some potatoes, so some maris pipers or some white potatoes. Working along the line, uh, you've got some red currant jelly. Now, any red currant jelly will do. I find that Wilkins and uh, Wilkin and Sons one is particularly good in this, and it works really well. You have some red wine. Now, you want what you want for a dish like this is you want a nice, dry red wine. I've gone for Rioja today. I picked this up from Waitrose. Uh, this is a Club Privado Rioja. I've had it before. It's really, really nice. And the good thing is, it was on offer today. Uh, so I picked that up, so you need 450 ml of red wine. Then you're going to need about 500 to 550 ml of stock. Now I've got venison stock here. This is actually the stock that I created off the back of butchering this deer. So this is actually a roe deer stock. And I boiled up all the bones, added in onion, carrot and some herbs as well. So I've got a gorgeous roe stock here. You need about 500 to 550 ml. If you don't have venison stock, which would be totally understandable, you can easily swap it out for beef stock, so don't worry too much about that. Um, and then you're going to need some plain flour and some salt and pepper, so that's to actually coat your venison in. From a herbs point of view, um, two or three sprigs of fresh thyme, a couple of uh, the cloves of garlic, and a couple of bay leaves as well. And that leads me to the start of the show, which is the, the venison itself. Now, as I said, this is roe venison, this is one of the smaller species of deer that you get here in the UK. Um, easily discernible because it's slightly bigger than a munch jack and has that distinctive uh, black, um, looks like a Hitler moustache actually. Um, but it's a really lovely, lovely meat. Now this meat here is specifically come from the shoulder, um, but essentially it's just diced venison. So it's just really, really lean, nice diced venison. Again, if you don't hunt or butcher your own uh, venison, don't worry too much. That isn't a, um, something you need to be doing. Uh, you can get this from most supermarkets. And to be perfectly honest, if you didn't want to do a venison uh, recipe, you could probably swap this out with uh, beef as well. The only other thing you really, really need is a nice, good pot. And um, this one has had a lot of use, as you can see. Um, so everything will go into this pot and it's a really, really easy recipe to do. Now, in terms of all of these ingredients, I'll put them all in the comments of this video, so it will be easily uh, findable afterwards. And uh, I suge suggest the next thing we need to, need to do is just get cooking. Let's go. So guys, the first thing you want to do in this recipe is to get all of your veg in the pan. So heat up the pan, get a nice big dollop of butter in there melting. And if I were you, just so the butter doesn't burn, I'll chuck in a bit of oil as well and melt that down. So what we want to do is we want to get that butter nice and melted and then we want to add all of our veg in at one go and fry it until it's nice and soft and translucent. In it goes. So we're going with the swede first. Then you've got your celery. Your carrot and your red onion. Although, to be honest, it really doesn't matter which order you do it in. 
And then what we wanna do is we just wanna get this fried on a kind of medium to high heat for five, 10 minutes or so. As you can see, my one was picking out all the old flavors from previous stews at the bottom. And we just wanna sit there, stirring it occasionally, and fry this until it becomes nice and caramelized. Now, you're gonna see here that actually this veg has really taken up a lovely kind of golden color now. Picked up all the old flavors from my old stews in there. Um, listen, I do, I do wash up my pots. I'm not saying I don't wash them up, but a bit of, a, a bit of flavor in a pot is uh, never, ever, ever a bad thing. But yeah, it's nice in the golden color. So the next step, what we need to do is we need to get our garlic cloves minced. So we've got two garlic cloves here, so get two nice big garlic cloves, mince them up. And get them in the pot. And then what we wanna do here is we don't wanna burn the garlic cloves at all. So we just wanna stir it up amongst the veg for about a minute. And really releases all that lovely, lovely garlic flavor. And I ought to mention actually, um, I didn't actually say at the start of the video, what you should need to do is you need to have your oven preheated to around 180 degrees. So you might be able to hear my oven in the background here, getting ready for this lovely, lovely stew when it's all kind of put together. And I for one cannot wait to eat this. I'm actually flying solo tonight, my wife is out put my baby to bed for the first time on my own in 10 months. So I'm feeling particularly proud of myself. And so I'm celebrating with my favorite type of stew. Now, that's pretty much done there, the veg. So just get yourself a spoon, and get it all out into a bowl nearby. I'm not gonna pick up this again because it is absolutely roasting hot. And I think I retained my cool when I was showing you the color of the veg beforehand, but inside I was absolutely screaming, it was boiling. And uh, seemingly I haven't learned my lesson. So get all your veg out, get it in a bowl, and we'll move on to the next stage of the process. So guys, next stage of the process is to get our venison coated in our, in our seasoned flour. So what you need to do is just get your venison in a bowl. You know what, you could even do this in, in like a plastic sandwich bag, but for the sake of ease today, get some plain flour, dunk it on top of your venison. Might get a bit messy, flour always seems to do. And don't be too prescriptive about how much to do as well. And then let's get seasoning the flour. And the reason, I apologize, my dog is barking. Give me two seconds. See, this is one of the occupations of when you're filming solo, you have barking dogs in the background. So as I was saying, um, season up, up your flour, great for your venison. And what this does is it coats the venison, which helps it fry, keeps in all the flavor. So what you want to do now is get your hands nice and dirty and get your venison pieces all coated. And like I said at the start of this video, I've got 500 grams of venison, diced venison here. And that is more than enough for two or three people. So there we go, really, really simple. Get it all coated up. And the next time you're gonna see this venison is in the frying pan. Now, once your venison is coated and you have your veg on the side, we need to get the venison fried. So first things first, would you believe it? We're gonna use a bit more butter. It's one thing this recipe does very well is get through quite a lot of butter. So get that butter frying in the frying pan and don't be afraid to hold back on the butter. Again, like at the start, use a bit of oil as well so the butter doesn't burn, not too much. Then we're gonna get our venison. So once you've got your venison, 
put it aside, and what we're going to do is we're going to add it in bits. So we're going to fry off some of the venison, put it in with the veg to rest, and when it's all done, we'll move on to the next stage of the process. So grab a handful, chuck it in. This is when I'm afraid it starts to get slightly smoky. So if the camera smokes up a bit, bear with me. So all we need to do is just get that, that flour, seasoned flour coated with venison in the pan and give it a good stir around. And what we want here is we want to brown the venison off. And this really, really helps as part of the stewing process in terms of keeping all that amazing venison flavor in, especially with the roe, which is such a gorgeous tasting meat. Now actually I've been making, this is probably, I would say, out of all the venison recipes I make, it's probably the most common one. There's no wonder, well, <laughs> no wonder my family loves it, because it is delicious, but I seriously thought they would be uh, fed up a bit by now. But every time someone new comes over in the winter, I'm making this stew, doing little additions to it, and it is just a stone-cold classic venison dish that you just can't go wrong with. To be honest with you, you don't want to be doing your venison in terms of browning it off much more than this. So I'm going to give this a few more stirs and then I'm going to get the next lot in. I think it's probably worth saying at this juncture, if you do enjoy this recipe, please do comment in the comments on YouTube. You know, it really, really helps me because, you know, if I know what you like, what you dislike, and kind of what you're looking for in, in terms of recipe videos, I can keep making good ones. Now, a bit more butter, get it in there, fry it off, and then we're gonna get the next bit of venison in there. As I was saying, if you let me know what you like from a recipe point of view, what recipes work, whether you've got any questions about the recipes that I'm putting together, just chuck them in the comments or send me an inbox, or if you see this on Instagram, send me a DM. You know, I really, really want this channel to grow and to create videos which kind of work for everyone. So it really, really helps. And if you do like it also, just tag your mates in or make this stew for them. And then say, oh yeah, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that stew? And you say, well, there's this chap I found uh, called Stuart, and he runs the Hedgerow Kitchen, and he makes a fantastic venison stew. Anyway, I'm rabbiting on, but I think you get the picture. Do let me know how you get on. Now, just give this a bit of a stir around, brown it off, and then the next stage of the process, we're going to put this all together. So we're going to use our wine, we're going to use our stock, we're going to use our herbs, we're going to use our red currant jelly, which is the uh, secret ingredient and works fantastically with venison. We're going to put it all together, and bang it in the oven. Now, as you can see, I'll test my hand strength again here. Yeah, not, still pretty hot. That's how browned off you want it. Not burnt, just browned. Take it out, stick it in the bowl with your veg, and then we are gonna move on to the next stage. So guys, next steps is we have our meat and we have our veg waiting in there, and now we've gotta prepare the other elements, so the liquid elements of the stock. So number one thing to do, and what we want to do is we want to deglaze this pan, which means just kind of take off the remnants of the meat, remnants of the veg. So get your red currant jelly, delicious stuff. What you want is about a tablespoon's worth. Again, yeah, you don't have to be too prescriptive. This is also where it can get quite smoky. Get that red currant jelly in the pan and scrape off all that lovely flavor from the bottom. Red currant jelly works so well with venison. Honestly, whenever I have a venison steak, Bambi steak, shall I say, or any form of venison, it is my accompaniment of choice. So what I'm gonna do, get that red currant jelly, deglazing the bottom of that pan, and then get your lovely 450 mils of dry red wine, in this case Rioja, in the pan. This will also help deglaze the bottom of the pan. So just get that bubbling up. I'm telling you, mm. smell in here is incredible. 
don't know about you guys, but red wine, yeah, I drink it all year, but it just reminds me of Christmas when you get it hot. It's got that lovely kind of mulled wine feeling about it. So as you'll see, it's immediately getting hot. So we will, what we want is a few bubbles, as you can see, are coming through right now. I can feel a lot of the bits on the bottom of the pan have been scraped off. Our wine's bubbling. And now we want to add most of our stock here. So I've actually got about 600 mil actually on measurement here of my venison stock. So I want to add probably about 500s worth. Get that in, and then get your herbs in. Bay leaves, fantastic, fantastic flavor. Again, goes superbly well with venison. Love that unmis unmistakable kind of sweet bay leaf smell. So get your two bay leaves in there, crush them up a bit, release some of the flavor, and then you wanna get your thyme in. Again, thyme is just such an incredible smell. Love it. And I've got, well, I've actually got four sprigs here, which probably a sprig too many, but you know what? You can never have too much time. Get that in there, give it a nice stir around. And then it's time to assemble the stew. So what you want to do is you want to get your meat and you want to get your veg and get it back in the pan. I'm telling you, I am pumped. I'm so excited about trying this later on mainly because it's just going to be me trying it because my wife is out tonight so actually if i want to finish the entire lot i can so get your veg and your meat back in give it a stir what you want to do now is you want to just bring this to the boil and once this is at the boil we're going to get it in the oven again 180 degrees for about an hour to an hour and a half i'll go and get my lid I'd say now's about the right time with all the smell of red wine to pour yourself a glass of red kick back let the wonderful smells surround your house and your kitchen all your family and friends marvel at your wonders at creating this incredible smell and get ready to feast on this lovely lovely stew Right, we've got to, got to get a bit of bubbling going on here before we get it in the oven. And then that will reduce nicely in the oven. And it's really simply, at the end of it, a case of serving it up. I like to have it just on its own. You can have it with some rice if you want. You could put dumplings. But this really, really showcases the venison so well, just eating it on its own. Nice and hot, succulent venison. And uh, it really, really doesn't get better than this. Right, got this boiling now. It's about time to get this in the oven. So see you on the other side. So I've just got this out of the oven. It's been in there for an hour and a half bubbling away. Stirred it a few times throughout the process, but largely left it unattended. And now let's have a look and see what it looks like. Oh, look at that gorgeous absolutely unctuous syrupy that is how you want a stew to look now next steps get your tongs out and remove all of your thyme twigs your bay leaves because i'm telling you you don't want to chow down on a bay leaf. It is not all that, and it's not gonna, it's gonna probably slightly ruin the taste of your, um, of your stew, if you eat a bay leaf. Is that a bay leaf? No, it's a bit of carrot. You know what? I'm gonna find it at some point. You know, I'm gonna have to just take the risk here. So, there's our stew, and time to serve it up. Oh, that's another stalk. Look at that. I cannot wait to get tucked into this. Oh, 
That should be enough for me. Can you see that? If you could smell what I'm smelling right now, you'd be very happy. Anyway, let's go and eat. So, it's time to eat this lovely, lovely stew. Give it a go, give it a try, and I can't wait. But first things first, if you have some of the wine left over that you've used in the stew, of course, it's an absolute perfect pairing for it. So pour yourself a little, or a big glass, depending on how hard your day has been, and get ready to drink. And also, a bit of bread and butter. You can tell I'm married to a Yorkshire lass. And actually, my wife um, made this salad over herself, so she'll be very, very happy that I'm trying it. So I'll try that in a minute, but I think we need to go in for the, uh, the main dish. God, this looks amazing. All right. It's going to be molten. Oh. Mmm. I don't like to blow my own trumpet, but that is sensational. It's just got that perfect balance of sweetness that comes through the, the, the wine and the red currant jelly. But then you've also got that lovely gaminess from the roe deer. And the actual stew itself is this kind of perfect balance of sweet and gamey. And that roe, that roe um, is just melting in your mouth. Mm. Bit hot. Honestly, you need to try this recipe. It's so easy, you can leave it on the hob, you can have a glass or two of wine in the process, and it just tastes amazing. It's kind of proper soul food. So please do give it a go. Let me know what you think of this dish. And uh, you know, if you try it, whether you've got any suggestions of things that I could try with it. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Do share it if you enjoy it. And I'd love to know how you get on. Cheers, enjoy. And also, please do subscribe if you uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, the more subscribers I have, the more videos I can do, and the more recipes and butchery stuff I can get out for you guys. Have a great day, and enjoy your Vincent's Chew.